not at all disturbed by the onslaughts of the threefold miseries. For he accepts all miseries as the mercy of the Lord, thinking himself only worthy of more trouble due to his past misdeeds, and he sees his miseries by the grace of the Lord are minimized to the lowest. So first of all, uh, when, when a devotee is in difficulty, he sees that, oh, yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I must have done something to deserve this. And, uh, and actually, Lord's so merciful that, you know, I just got a little cut on my finger and my hand should have been cut off, you know. But instead, I just got a little cut. So he feels like, oh, you know, this is uh, it's not, not so bad. Not so bad. Now, what happens if uh, a person who does not worship Krishna, who does not worship God, what happens when um, some uh, trouble comes to that person? What does he think? Why me? <laughs> Why is this happening to me? I'm such a good person. Uh, I, you know, I take care of my family, and I work hard, and I'm honest. Why is this happening to me? Um, so sometimes even us devotees may think like that too. Why is this happening to me, of all people? And it happens to everyone, because we're in the material world. <laughs> so don't be surprised. Um, but the devotee thinks, oh, yeah, actually, uh, it is being minimized. I'm not getting the full thing I should have done. Now, sometimes we also uh, look at people and uh, somebody might be crippled, somebody might be sick, somebody might be blind, and we think, wow, could be worse, you know? I'm glad that's not happening to me. Oh, I'm, I certainly, I'm lucky. It's not happening to me. Uh, but then, there are some people who see others suffering. And they say, this should have, why not me? This should happen to me. I, I should suffer and not them. So that's the attitude of the pure Bhoti, of the Lord. He thinks, let me suffer for them. And just like uh, Jesus Christ, he said, you know, he suffered for, for others. And so our Sri Prabhupada also had that, that mentality. And, he was walking early in the morning, six o'clock, in the parks in the major cities all over the world. And he was seeing the people rushing to work in their cars, and he was crying, thinking, oh, how much they, they have to work so hard, how much they're suffering. And I just saw um, a picture of, actually it was a video of Japan, where uh, the people are being stuffed into trains, and they have hired people to stuff you into the train car so that you will fit. And in, and in Bombay, 7.5 million people every day go to work on the train. I used to go. It, it looks worse now than it was when I was traveling. I was going for book distribution in the train, but the others are going to work. So, and it, it was, uh, well, there's an unending feast here. Sure, and everybody. Very nice. Well, he's going to eat his heart out today. Yeah. <laughs> Pavel is happy now. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so, okay. So that's the, when good, when difficult things happen, when the body, he is, uh, he still sees it as mercy. He sees it as mercy. Now, what about when good things happen to a devotee? He gives all the credit. Oh, this is, this is, my Lord is so kind to me. He has given me a nice uh, place to stay and nice food to eat, and he has given me everything just so I can serve him. And how does a um, person who doesn't worship Krishna or, or God, how does he think? Ah, my success is due to my hard work. <laughs> and because I'm so intelligent, and I'm so expert, and that's why I have success in my life. Let me give credit to the Lord. And so yes, uh, this is the mentality. Um, so Gita teaches us um, how a devotee behaves, how he thinks, and, but sometimes we know these things. It's in, our, it's in our mind, but it's hard for us to 
uh, practically apply it or to realize it. There's a gap sometimes between our actual, what we know, and how we um, actually experience it. And so that was even when Shira Prabhupada was here, uh, there was um, the problem that uh, one devotee was telling Prabhupada, you know, I feel affected by the modes of nature. Uh, I'm experiencing desires. You know, Prabhupada said, you are not experiencing. Your body is experiencing. You're, you're not feeling hot due to the... Uh, you're feeling hot due to this body, but you're not hot. So the devotee said, I, feel like, I think I'm feeling hot. Um, really, that's how I feel. So, what that offering. Offering, more offering? Oh, it will never end. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, we have a, we interrupt this program uh, to feed the Lord's more yoga. <laughs> and they are calling Anior, uh, Anior. <laughs> give me more, give me more. All right, uh, yes, uh, we think you're feeling cold. They'll probably say, you think, but that's illusion. Because you get a fever and you think, oh yeah, yeah I'm feverish. Oh. But no, it's not your natural state. That you will become healthy again. So there's, uh, there are three <coughs> miseries as described in this verse. Threefold miseries, three kinds. So what are those three kinds that we experience in this world? Uh, first is called Adi Baltic, and that means miseries due to other people or other insects or dogs or like that. And so we can counteract that according to Bhagavatam by good behavior and freedom from envy. And then we can counteract. And then there's Adi Dhavik, that's due to the demigods, due to the weather. Now the weather is so bad uh, in many parts of the world. It's very, very hot, hot summer, hot summer. Now in, in Vrindavan, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it was 48 degrees, oh and that's why I'm not there, I'm here. <laughs> yes. 44, 46, 48 degrees, uh, two weeks. Now it's monsoon, so it's it's cooled down to 32. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but it was, it was very hot. And uh, so that's one type of misery, the weather and tsunamis and earthquakes. And um, then the third type is Ariyami. And that misery is our mind and our body, which give us trouble. So that's the third kind. And so how do you counteract uh, miseries due to the weather? That's by meditation and trance. How do you counteract miseries due to the body? Bhagavatam says, Hatha Yoga, Hanayama, and so on. Interesting. So we're going to discuss each of these miseries and uh, uh, the first one is Adi Daivik, meditation and trance. Uh, of course, our meditation is Hare Krishna mantra. So you just experience that. Um, so in India, 2013, there was a flood, an avalanche at Kedarnath where Lord Shiva um, is worshipped. It's his, his temple. And I was watching it on Facebook. And uh, so, it was, it was devastating. The roads were finished. They could not go out. Maybe a thousand people were trapped because it was, uh, they were going for pilgrimage up there. So during that devastation, there was one saintly person who was standing like this and just looking at Lord Shiva. And he was meditating in trance. He didn't notice there was an avalanche. He didn't notice that the, uh, there was a flood. He was just there, meditating in trance. And so he, he was able, you can counteract that uh, by, by meditation in trance. And sometimes our devotees, they go out uh, if we're distributing books or singing and dancing in the streets. And sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's snowing. But they don't, they, they don't care. They feel, oh, it's okay, you know. 
And before in, in normal life, they would feel the problem. Oh, great. It's terrible. So, oh my goodness. But after becoming devotees of Krishna and um, serving Krishna, then they, yeah, I remember I was out 10 hours a day chanting Hare Krishna in Boston, in the sun, in the rain, in the snow. And it was funny because before I surrendered and became a devotee, I was thinking, uh, I, if I become a devotee, I won't be able to dance in the rain anymore. Well, I tell you, after that, <laughs> I was dancing in the rain and the snow and the sun uh, all the time. Uh, but no, it's, uh, this, this, is, this is a way to counteract it by having your thoughts on Krishna, on serving Krishna. So Adi Bautik, that's another misery. That is the, um, due to other people, generally. Good behavior and freedom from envy. So what is good behavior? If you see a senior, then you, you think, oh, let me help, let me serve that person. Let me learn from that person how I can also be successful. When Shri Prabhupada went to Japan, he met one junior executive uh, in the company, and he asked this executive what, so he was printing books, so this is a printing company, he asked him, what is your goal in life? So, this executive had a stack of calling cards, and his, his name was on the bottom, he took it from the bottom, put it on the top, that's my goal in life. But in order to do that, so material, material life, to, to get yourself to the top, you have to push others down. That's how it goes. In spiritual life, it's the opposite. If you bring somebody up, then you also go up too. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, so uh, we are not envious of people who have more than us, but we simply, uh, we can serve them people who are more advanced. If somebody is equal to you, then you should make friends with them. If someone is your junior, you should be merciful and help them to come up to where you are. And so this is, um, this is our, our process. And also, um, besides that, there was um, one man who was also very merciful to us devotees when we came to India first. It was um, Bombay, huge culture shock, huge culture shock, uh, but even worse than normal because uh, we were making a temple and we had no place to live, the devotees. The men were in a hut. The hut was for eating, for the men to sleep, it was the office, it was the kitchen, it was everything. So that was the hut, and then the ladies were living on the roof of a building. So my first day in Bombay, time to eat prasadam. I was sitting on the floor, we had a leaf plate, you know. So that's good, eco, people friendly. It's just a leaf plate, you can throw it away, it's not a problem. And, um, and then I was looking up, and I was seeing all these huge rats running across the rafters. And I was thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't fall on my plate. <laughs> he fell on someone else's plate. <laughs> I was happy, <laughs> but I shouldn't have been, I think. But anyway, <laughs> that culture, can you imagine the culture shock? Oh my God. Uh, so it was like, there was no Bisleri and our drinking water was in a clay pot with a lid. You take off the lid and all these mosquitoes and bugs were oh, like, oh, we had to drink that water. We were sick. We were very sick. And so that, we were, so um, one man, he took um, pity on us, one doctor. He used to go on walks with Shri Prabhupada on Jewel Beach. He took mercy. So he went begging, although he was a doctor. He got mosquito nets, he got mattresses, pillows, blankets for us. But within two years, they all vanished. Because we didn't have doors to our, we, weren't, we didn't have a, a room, a house. And so it was all stolen. And, um, and you know, we got sick and you know, he was a doctor and he was discussing with Prabhupada, his goal was to merge and liberation. He wanted to get out of this world and be liberated. And so Prabhupada was talking to him and he, he, well, he was complaining about us. Oh, you're, you know, your devotees, they don't take care of their thing themselves. 
And Prabhupada said to him, that liberation, you so much desire, they already have it. You're liberated. <laughs> anyway, yes. So this is um, how to get free from the misery of other people. And adhyatmic is the misery of your own mind and your own body. And the common reaction is pranayama hatha yoga and chanting. Prabhupada did say, for us, pranayama is chanting and dancing. That's our pranayama. <laughs> so you already did it once, and you'll probably do it again today, I think. So uh, pranayama. So when I was, um, I heard uh, an example of how to get um, protected and freed uh, from the fearful misery of the body and mind. Um, His Holiness Indudum Goswami was traveling on an airplane and, uh, in Africa. And so the plane was coming down to land and it started shaking violently, big winds. And uh, so Maharaj started going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the Muslims are going, Allah. And the Christians are going, Jesus. And he inspired everyone. And so then the plane went back up. And next to Maharaj, there was a man. And he said, Swamiji, I do not believe in these things. I'm a scientist. The plane went back down, started shaking violently. The scientist was looking very sick. Maharaj was going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Playing it back up. Uh -huh. Scientist said, Swamiji, what was that you were saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> so then, Hare Krishna. No, no, whole thing, whole thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> so then, the pilot made the announcement, okay, we're trying one more time. And if we don't succeed, we'll go back to where we came from. They went down, started shaking violently. Everyone was chanting, including the scientist. Uh, and the plane landed. Uh, <laughs> Mara said to the scientist, now do you believe? He said, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Mara said, here's my card. In case you have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, so um, this chanting uh, will protect you, will, will make you happy. Uh, even if your mind is disturbed or your body is disturbed. Now, I'll give you one more example of, um, I go to Nepal every year, I'll, I'll go to September. So in Nepal, we had a ladies retreat, only ladies. 150 Nepali ladies were dancing and singing. They started at 7.30 at night, last night of the retreat. And uh, so one Gujarati lady, she went and said, you know, it's time to eat, 7.30. Nobody paid attention. They were singing and dancing. 8.30 came, and she went. She said, sad, <laughs> time to eat. Uh, nobody paid attention. 9.30 came. She went. She tried again. Nobody paid attention. She, so she started chanting and dancing, and she forgot to eat also. Yeah. And so yes, uh, this this can this works. The pranayama, and uh, Agita also talks about um, being uh, regulated. How this will help you become free from all miseries. Four things you have to uh, be regulated in. This is chapter six, verse seventeen. Oh, I opened it up to you. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. Eating, sleeping, recreation, you get, to, you get that too, and work. So even if you take up spiritual life, you can still have recreation. Um, so, but this is a chapter about yogis. So yogis, what they do, they they sit in the asana the whole day, like, like this or like this. Or, and so now what is their recreation? They go for a walk, because then they're out of their asana. Uh, so our Guru Shira Prabhupada, he used to go for walks every day. The walking is the recreation of the yogi. Yeah, walking is very good. So um, if we can regulate ourselves like this, 
then we can um, stop all the miseries of our body and our mind. Too much work is not good. Too much sleep is not good. Too much eating is not good. In fact, Sri Prabhupada said there's three causes of disease, and one is overeating, one is lack of cleanliness, and the one, the other one is stress, anxiety, the cause of disease. So these two things. So we have to balance that. Um, so in the attitude of the devotee, there's a verse in Bhagavatam, Tatena Pampa, Susamikshmano, and that is um, that you hope against hope that you will get the mercy of the Lord on you. Second, Manjana Ivatakutam, Ivakam, you tolerate the reactions of your karma. And third, you serve, you don't give up, even, you know, you there's some uh, problem, difficulty, there's karma. You keep on doing your service with body, mind, and words. And if you do all that, then you can, um, you inherit the kingdom of God. You go back to the spiritual world. So, but sometimes devotees, they would get confused and they would say, you know, oh, yeah, I, I know your books, you say, uh, when you become a devotee, you're on the transcendental level. At the same time, you talk about being affected by the modes of nature. So he says, I'm a devotee. This devotee was asking Prabhupada, I'm practicing devotional service. I'm experiencing some happiness. But at the same time, I feel affected by the modes. How can that be? Prabhupada said, it's just like being on a boat. When you're on the boat, no one can say you're not on the boat. You're on the boat. But, uh, but sometimes big waves will come and rock the boat. And that's the modes of nature hitting you, even though you're on the boat. So just don't get off the boat. Keep on, keep on chin, Hare Krishna, taking prasadam, that's very important. And uh, then you learn from the guru how to steer, steer the boat in this uh, ocean of nations. I'm gonna stop with one prayer. I conclude this part of our program with a prayer if you do experience um, difficulties. My Lord, I cannot solve this, this alone, which is beyond my capability, intelligence, plans, ideas. I sincerely request you to accept me as your surrendered soul and protect and maintain me. Protect me means keep me in a situation where I can function. And the problems of material existence don't upset my life that much. Maintain me means maintain me on the spiritual platform. So these things are one way to, this may help you when you're in uh, difficulty. So now I'd like to talk about Guru Puja. It's a day uh, in India when everybody um, worships their Guru. This special day today. Of course, we have our own days. Uh, Prabhupada's day is uh, in August. I think this year it will be August 27th. So we have our own special days, but in India they have this day. And it's in Vrindavan, it's Sanatana Goswami's appearance day and also Vyasadeva. So Vyasadeva is the original guru. And he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam, which we read every day in the morning. And he, he, he started, uh, he was worshiping Krishna. He said, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, he's worshiping, he, and uh, he gave a benediction that whoever will hear Bhagavatam, attentively and submissively, you can capture Krishna in your heart. He's already there, but um, he's, uh, he's in the form of uh, Narayan Sukha, so you can see the form over here on the wall, or, or actually on this side, super soul. He's in our heart right now, like that. Uh, but if you hear Bhagavatam, then that form will become transformed into Krishna. And Krishna will help you. So um, one time it was, so we're talking about appearance day. So we have here Bhakti Siddhanta. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he's the guru of Shiva Prabhupada. So one time Prabhupada, our Prabhupada was was offering flowers and worshiping his guru. And um, then he quoted uh, Vyasadeva, who, who said, let us meditate dhimahi, the, 
and at the end of his uh, the first verse of Bhagavatam, let's meditate, <coughs> let's worship Krishna. So when uh, Vyasadeva said that, uh, let us worship Krishna, he's including all of us. So Prabhupada, when he was worshiping his guru, he was offering flowers and he asked us to also <coughs> offer flowers. So when the guru offers worship, that means all of his followers are also offering worship. He's bringing us all with him, all with him. And so this is this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Just like um, in India, I live in India, I live in Vrindavan, we have a big, big temple, and uh, uh, crowds of people come every day to see the deities. And sometimes you see a mother, like there was a mother over here with a, one child, you know, on the, on the shoulder, and then maybe another child holding the hand, another one in the womb. I, I'm not, no, she has one too, yeah. She has three children, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she has three, and one yeah. inside too. No, but I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, not, not this particular one, but she's a good example. She had the one on her shoulder, and she has another two with her hands. Uh, so we see that an Indian one lady comes like that. She's pregnant, she has one on her shoulder, one with her hand. When she bows down to the deity, all of them bow down. The one in the shoulder, the one in here, one in your hand. Everyone goes down. So when Prabhupada offers his worship, we all go with him. He takes us all with him. And we also worship Krishna. And that's what the Guru does. Uh, that's what the Guru does. And so that's, we're very fortunate to be uh, followers of Srila Prabhupada. The whole world is burning, and we see now there's wars, so many wars breaking out. It's like a forest fire. Oh, unfortunately, um, yeah, there's a forest fire in Canada, which just destroyed some, we have um, um, Sharanagati, uh, it's a village of devotees, and the fire has gone there now. So we pray for them. Uh, six to ten houses have been destroyed. Uh, all the devotees are safe, the cows are safe, they have been evacuated, but they have lost, some of them have lost their houses in the fire. They came once, and all the houses were okay. Now it came the second time. And uh, six to ten houses have been destroyed. And so we're asked to pray for these devotees in Canada. Uh, so that's, the world is burning. It's burning. Uh, there's a forest fire, and the Guru is like a cloud, a rain cloud who pours water on the fire. And so some, we see the world is on fire, some people's hearts are on fire, and, and we can get relief from the spiritual master. Like hearing uh, spiritual words which will um, soothe, will give us food for our soul. We all need spiritual food. And that's what you get here, that you won't get out there. Uh, you won't get spiritual food. You can get other food uh, that might help your body, might hurt your body. Uh, but here you get spiritual food, which will help your body, mind, soul, everything. Food for the soul. Food for the soul. There's so many um, sannyasis went to the Western countries before Prabhupada, but no one became a devotee of Krishna. That's what's his special gift. So before Prabhupada came, uh, to the west here, he was given advice, you know, um, you're going to the foreign country, don't know how to use the fork and the knife. And so Prabhupada said, you know, I will, I will, I'm not going to learn all these things, I'm going to teach them something else. And so actually in the old days, we didn't have spoons or, or, or forks or knives, we were eating with our fingers. Uh, that's how he taught us. Uh, in India still, uh, some people eat with their fingers. Um, so, uh, and that's actually, Ayurveda, according to Ayurvedic medicine, it's good if you touch the food and then you feel it, if it's hot or cold, and then you know before you put it in your mouth. And feel the texture also. You feel everything, it's part of eating. Um, but that's okay if you eat with a spoon, because it's prasadam, so it'll be benefit anyway. Uh, may not be Ayurvedic. Uh, so, Sri Prabhupada, he said, he was praised many times, and he said, you know, um, uh, that uh, I, he never gave credit to, he, he gave credit to his guru, he gave credit to us. He said, my guru, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta, has sent all of you to help me 
to spread. He's put you in different countries of the world to spread this movement. And so um, this day we can pray to please Prabhupada uh, that we can help him expand the mission and uh, just carry on without changing anything, how he spoke it to us. And then it will be powerful. So I'll stop here. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, you can ask. <clears throat> yes. I just have a humble request that we do a handwritten prayer. This handwritten prayer. Mm. Will you kindly repeat it? Huh? I can what? Will you repeat, repeat it? I'll repeat the handwritten prayer. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. I can impress it really. Okay. One more time. Thank you so much. If you're, in, if you're having difficulties, I can find. Here it goes. Yes, yes. Uh, I cannot solve this alone. It is beyond my capabilities, intelligence, plans, ideas, etc. I sincerely request you to accept me as your surrendered soul and protect and maintain me. Protect me means keep me in a situation where I can function and the problems of material existence don't upset my life that much. Maintain me means maintain me on the spiritual platform. Protect and maintain me. I surrender to you. Please protect and maintain me. So that actually I got that prayer from His Holiness Sachinanda Swami. He said that. That's his prayer. I can say that. Any other question? Yes. <coughs> because I'm <coughs> you're mentioning uh, that uh, uh, the adidalic that means that misery is coming from um, nature. The nature, the demigods. You can be countered by, let's say, transcendental meditation. And yeah, trans so, so okay, we are not we are not sitting down like this yogi in Bhadra or neither dead or not. Dead or not. And, uh, and, and, and I don't perceive. <laughs> Let's see what's going on around. Right. Uh, no, no, we're not. Our meditation is on the service. Yeah. So, two things. <coughs> like you mentioned, <coughs> when uh, you're going on Sankatan or you do Arinam on the street or you go on book distribution. So, you're doing it in any kind of weather. <coughs> yeah. So, we had. You know, the Adidavik up here is pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so we had a, a lot of experience on this. Uh, yeah. and, uh, In winter, no? Especially winter, yeah. And um, on uh, Buddhism, because we were in, in the coast of Norway, so that means Atlantic, Atlantic storms. Atlantic storm. <laughs> yeah, coming in. Yeah, the whole coast is. Oh, of course, uh, autumn, course. winter, you know, and uh, and sometimes <coughs> people, even people, were they couldn't believe that we were out. They couldn't believe. I mean, they are used to this. Okay. They are not so disturbed. Yeah. But they, they they open their windows. We knock on their windows. Okay. Oh, you're not in the window. Should I open it? It's, it's just blasting rain and the wind, you know? Right. Wind you know? and rain, blasting wind and rain. <laughs> and they're like... They're looking at <laughs> book distributors out there. And they even, they took books just because they were so impressed. Somebody going out in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they were oh, buying the books because they were so impressed. Yeah, yeah, the whole possible, out. you know. You out in this, you know. <laughs> we go out in this weather. <laughs> and... Uh, and... <clears throat> Sometimes the was hail and it was like hail. horizontal, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> and you had to hide behind. You couldn't stand out there. You had to hide behind the wall. Yeah, and hide if somebody the wall. coming, you run out. And then stay with them and run back to the shelf. So uh, you'd but, go out in the hail <laughs> to give them a book, yeah. and then you would run back. But some of the days. The best days were in the most crazy weather. So 
for the best days for distribution and the most Sometimes it was, <laughs> yeah. And then you understood this is completely transcendental. It's transcendental, yeah. So you could tolerate because yeah. your meditation was on distributing the It books. was actually, you could actually just do it if you were somewhat in trance. Yeah, you had to be in trance. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> no normal person would be, do that. <laughs> no. You had to be in trance in meditation on uh, Sri Prabhupada and Krishna, or else you can't be in the blasting rain and and hail distributing books in Norway on the coast. <coughs> and that was definitely, uh, what do you say, Pachaksha, uh, <coughs> experience of what you're saying, because yes. <coughs> normal life here for many of us was, comes the autumn, and comes the or late autumn depression. So in the autumn and the late autumn oh, yeah. depression. It's, it's in foggy skin. or sometimes foggy. the rain. I remember the rain was the slashing on the windows. Slashing. And it was like going into my... Going into your heart. Into like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then comes the dark. Then comes the dark for how many months? <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the cold. And you, <clears throat> you, would, you didn't look... You, you know, now it's coming, you know. <laughs> and you get... A little down, but you know it's coming. But over the years, like you said, it doesn't matter. Over the years, after so many years, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't I mean, matter. Dark, dark, dark whatever. whatever. And then, uh, <clears throat> but it's a big difference from what it was coming from a tail life. Yes. You are definitely. <clears throat> yeah, the bodies are meditating in trance always, and so they, uh, they can counteract that misery of complete darkness for how many months, you know, five, four or five months? Yeah. The sun sets in what, October and rises in February, <coughs> basically. <coughs> <laughs> That's unheard of. <coughs> to be in dark for four months. So you must have a lot of suicides and, and things. Yes. But it's well known fact that it's, uh, this, uh, this period is brings uh, increase of depressions and increase yeah depression. this yeah late autumn and late autumn. winter and you know and then winter comes and you're you everyone's depressed it's not so bad here but in the north it's really oh, in dark the north. Oh, okay. in the north not so bad five here. months yeah here you have sometime sun during the winter oh, the sun might come yes oh sometime yes <laughs> <laughs> but to the north is really Sometimes the sun may come here. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm glad you can see the sun sometimes. <coughs> that, yeah. Well, yeah, here, like, I get up at, it doesn't matter what time I get up in the night, and it's still so light here. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you have personal experience. Yeah, definitely. I, this, I just um, noticed it after some... I, because we didn't practice to get transcendental. No, you didn't practice meditation. <coughs> it comes naturally it just, as a devotee. Just notice that these things which bother before it doesn't bother. And before it bothered you, before you were a devotee, and now you're a devotee. And uh, yeah, the darkness, you, you don't get depressed when the mm. darkness comes. Because mm. you have a higher taste. You have, you have light. You're, you have, you're in the light of spir the spiritual light. <coughs> You're in the spiritual life, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Speak loud. Yeah, uh, how does it like hold together? Uh, as a neophyte devotee, you may ask, and if there is this instruction to live balanced life, have a proper recreation, then you can be yogi. But sometimes you hear about, for example, your austerities, austerities of the majority <coughs> movement. It was like no recreation, you just completely giving themselves to a full service. Uh, almost 24 hours a day, you know, you said four hours to sleep, and that went just service. Uh, so, but um, yeah, <laughs> but maybe we are in another period um, uh, from us, it's also so required. That's why we are so empowered to, to be uh, living on that elevated platform. Uh, can you explain? You're saying it's different now than it was before? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, <coughs> no, it's still there. You can have the same austerities. Um, I mean, it's just to don't give up spiritual life. And that's the austerity. Keep on going, no matter what happens. And that's your austerity right now. Because um, now Kali Yuga has worsened a lot. And, uh, and so it's a big, it's, the austerity has become worse. 
And of course, there are devotees in Ukraine who are doing austerities. Um, and that they are, you know, although the bombs are flying, they're feeding people, thousands of people every day. I mean, there's still uh, uh, austerities. But of course, um, the main austerity is the body and mind now at this, t this time. Uh, uh, of old age. And then uh, the diseases of Kali Yuga are much worse because of the e pollution. We didn't have that. And when Prabhupada was here, there were no computers, no email. Can you imagine life without email, <laughs> life without Facebook, life without all these programs? What would you do? <laughs> there were no cell phones. <clears throat> what, what did the kids do? Yeah. In Playing those days, they used to go outside and play. You know, and now all the all the, the toy companies in America went bankrupt because the kids are just on the phones. Yeah. They are, you know, that's their recreation, and it's bad for the eyes. It's bad for the. Somebody was telling me their daughter had was so addicted. Yeah, this devotee, their uh, their neighbor, one of the devotee's daughters, so addicted to the phone. She's only sixteen, and now she had to change her glasses eyeglasses six times because her eyes got so bad age of 16 mm. and I see I was just on the airplane uh, and on uh, yeah, one of the airplanes I was on so many and I saw one lady with the kid in the lap not even oh. two years old the kid had the phone and she was <laughs> she must have been one and a half years old oh, yeah. and um, so mother took the phone away and she was having a tantrum and banging the seat and mother, okay, here's the phone back. <laughs> so it's such an addiction, it's an addiction now. We didn't have that. Uh, of course, <laughs> we didn't even have telephones, basically. I was in India and if you want, I tried to make a phone call in, in the same city. You'd have to try for 10 times to get through. Uh, and then what to speak of America, uh, 10 times, yeah. Oh, and um, yeah, so and and one in Vrindavan one time, you know, there's the mail. We only had mail, you know, like they call it snail mail, the uh, mail. Uh, so one time we saw all of all of our mail floating down the Jumuna River. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, no wonder we didn't get our mail. Um, it's so mail. Now you have now nobody uses mail hardly, maybe for packages and stuff. Uh, if they're package, but uh, yeah, can you imagine what would what would anybody do without their cell phone now? Would they be able to live life without cell phones? Suicide. Huh? Suicide. <laughs> What's that? Suicide. Oh, suicide. suicide. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yes. You know when when we did the mobile phone. Mm. The small thing one, like this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, is, <coughs> it is burning. The it's burning brain. the brain, yeah. And they did mental diseases. Yeah, they did. And this kind of disturbances, you know, in kind of mental class. Yeah. It is more and more. And yeah. children are also born with that because yeah. the parents have done this, yeah. you know, when they were in the room. Mm. And they had the phone there, and they had all these technical things, and they yeah. they say vibrations. Yeah, they, they don't know how to. Like I see on the plane, um, I mean in the airport, I'm waiting for my plane. Father, mother, children, one, two, three, four. And so the mother came. I saw the mother. Mother had her cell phone. Father had her cell phone, and then she has all the kids. Tablet, 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 tablet. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. <laughs> I saw her prepare the kids with the tablets, waiting for the plane, waiting to get on the plane. I saw four kids, mother, father, and then you have the young couple, newly married, each of them's on their phone. You know, <laughs> they're not even looking at each other. <laughs> I don't. I think people have lost how to yeah. interact with each other. Yeah. Uh, so now, relationships. Yeah, relationships. Mm -hmm. It's virtual. It's all virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, and. Uh, so this is, I think it's much more austere now. I mean, how do you stop people if, if they're on their cell phone? You know, how do you stop them to give them a book? You know, it's like, they've got their earplugs on. Mm -hmm. how, how do you talk to anyone? 
I think one devotee tried an experiment that she would just try to talk to somebody and they would look like she's crazy. You know, what, what they're talking <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, my spiritual master is saying that this, um, this addiction to the phone, mm. it's a very big uh, obstacle in spiritual life. Obstacle in spiritual life. Because, because, especially if you're running from childhood, because you don't have this ability to exchange emotionally. You don't have ability. And then you don't have ability to exchange with the Lord. Yeah, you can't exchange emotion with people mm. or with the Lord. If, yeah, you lose it if you have the, the cell phone. Mm. Yes, that's true. Uh, His Holiness Sachinang Swami calls the cell phone weapons of destruction. We have weapons of destruction, you know, like mm, guns and things. And we also have the cell phone is a weapon of destruction. How to distract you in the day. Yes. In old times, you know, people often got bored, you know. You mm. could be bored. And that was good. Because yeah. when you were bored, what you do, you would think. Yeah. You know, what you would ponder over what is going on and anything. Today I heard that people are not bored at all because as soon no, as there is an empty space, they... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah I, I, I lived in the village in Goa for five years. Yeah. And they didn't have TV when I was living there. Uh, but it, it was introduced. So before TV came, everybody would go to each other's house mm. and visit and talk. Mm. And if we would go to our friend's house, they would talk to us. But then after TV came, everyone was looking at the TV. They wouldn't talk to us anymore. Like, yeah. where's the friendship? I saw it come in India. I saw what it did to the people. And yeah, and, and they were saying, oh, now we have to eat eggs because it says on TV. That eggs are good. Uh. You know, yeah, now we started eating eggs. Yeah. This is, yeah, and that's, the TV is to make you um, break all the principles. It's their preaching. You have to be careful. Yeah? Um, um, we, to, we, we know how auspicious it is to reach with Bhagavatam. This is like a, such a wonderful gift. Bhagavatam. And even though one may not be like such a great devotee, but still, uh, for example, there are like pregnant ladies. And I heard mm -hmm. if, uh, if the mother reads Bhagavatam to the baby in the womb, that the baby becomes so extremely benefited. Uh, like mm -hmm. we, I know in Prahlad Maharaj, uh, yeah, we yeah. heard uh, one of the spiritual master in the womb and became a great devotee. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I wanted to ask, uh, is there some maybe Srimad Bhagavatam uh, part which one can recommend to the pregnant ladies? <laughs> no, I would just say, when I was pregnant, I was just reading all the prayers. Mm -hmm. Prayers of Kunti, prayers of Pallad. And that, that was very nice to read, the prayers. And because uh, it's described in Bhagavatam that the child in the womb is praying, actually. He's praying to get out, he's suffering. And he's praying, when will I be released? And um, so then it's good to he hears the prayers, different prayers, that he can also say. I think, yeah, different prayers. So I was doing that when I was pregnant. I had, I was doing the whole, all the prayers of the Bhagavatam. And twice through I went when I was pregnant. Okay, so uh, any other questions? Okay, we'll stop here for this prayer. Krishna. Now it's time for meditation and trans, pranayama, pranayama. Um... <laughs> <laughs>